Hi everyone. My name is Shweta Jain. I'm a postdoc at the University of Utah. This is joint work with Balram Behra, Eden Husej, Tim Rafgarden, and Sishadri Komandur. This talk is about FET algorithms for counting near peaks in C close graphs, and I'll explain what those terms are. And uh, this talk is to appear in IPCS 2022. So the inspiration, the motivation for this work is actually real world graphs. So in network analysis on such graphs, uh, one of the most important tasks is counting subgraphs. Subgraphs like tri triangles, cycles, cliques, near cliques, where by near cliques, we mean cliques that are missing a small subgraph. And uh, these counts of such uh, subgraphs they're used in applications like community detection, in edge prediction, in spam detection, and many more applications. Many of these problems are actually NP hard, and yet something interesting has happened in the last few years. Extremely simple backtracking algorithms have proven to work very well on these graphs in practice. And there have been a number of works that have been along these lines, trying to come up with faster uh, click counting and kplex counting algorithms. And to give you an idea of how fast these are, uh, they're able to count cliques and near cliques in graphs with millions of vertices and edges in minutes. So this is a plot from uh, one of the recent papers. Um, so the plot on the left, uh, it shows the four large graphs on the x-axis and the y-axis shows time in seconds on a log scale. Uh, the sizes of the four graphs are shown in the table on the right. And as we can see, they easily run into millions of vertices and edges. Um, so ignore the red lines for now. Um, the lightest blue line uh, that corresponds to the time taken by that algorithm to count all peaks in that graph. Um, and the darker versions of blue correspond to the same algorithm uh, when it uh, counted the number of peaks per vertex and per edge as well, which are harder problems than uh, counting just the number of peaks. So as you can see, and for three out of four graphs, the algorithm ran in minutes. And for Orkut, it took about a couple of hours. Um, and this was on a commodity machine. Um, and this was a sequential algorithm, so it did not even use parallelism. Bottom line is that these algorithms work really, really well in practice. And so clearly, the structure of the graph is helping the algorithms, and it's not worst case. So from the point of view of beyond worst case analysis, this raises the question, what structure is leading to this behavior? So in order to explain this, a graph class called c -close graph was recently proposed in 2018 by Jacob Fox, Tim Ruff Garden, Sishwadri Komandur, Fan Wei, and Nicole Wein. And the idea behind this graph class was to capture this notion of triadic closure, which is a property that real world graphs show, which is that a friend of a friend is likely to be a friend. The formal definition is that a graph is said to have C closure if every pair of vertices that have C or more common neighbors are themselves connected. So if you have two vertices, U and V that have C or more common neighbors, there has to be an edge between those two vertices. If a graph is C closed, it is also C plus one closed, C plus two closed and so on. And so we pick the lowest value of C. Now to give some examples, uh, C equals one corresponds to um, disjoint union of cliques. And then you can have C equals two, C equals three and so on. So in the same paper, the authors showed that uh, maximal clique enumeration can be done in FPT time. And following that, there have been a number of works that have tried to show that several other NPR problems are actually fixed parameter tractable uh, on this graph class. 
One of the notable works is that of uh, Koana from 2020, uh, computing dense and sparse subgraphs of weakly C close graphs. Um, and they, amongst many other subgraphs, they also count k uh, plexes, which um, we also have counted. And so this was concurrent work. Part of this was concurrent work at that time. And there have been several other papers. What we do in this work is that we count, we show that FET algorithms exist for enumerating several kinds of near cliques. Um, so the first near clique is D plus one plexus. So these are complement graphs of bounded degree graphs. So it's easier to think of, so the near cliques that we've addressed in some sense, they're dense subgraphs. And so it's, in some cases, it's easier to think of the sparse version of it in the complement graph. So D plus one plexes are essentially complement graphs of bounded degree graphs. Uh, then we also look at complement graphs of bounded degeneracy graphs. And we also look at complement graphs of bounded tree width graphs. So our proofs, they come in two different flavors. Um, the first one is we show that there actually exist very simple fact tracking algorithms that one can show our FPT for the C close graphs. And then we also show uh, proofs using the three step approach of Fox et al. Uh, we'll look briefly at what this approach is. And both of these approaches have their own advantages. So the first one um, has the advantage that it is closer to what we observe in reality. And so in some sense, it, it uh, gives us a better theoretical understanding of why these algorithms are working well in practice and it helps to bridge that gap. And whereas the three-step approach, um, for certain cases, it can uh, give us FPT algorithms, uh, even in cases where we may not know a backtracking algorithm for that problem. Uh, and sometimes it can even lead to um, slightly tighter bounds. Uh, in the process of uh, proving this, uh, using this three-step approach, to prove the FPT, prove that FPT algorithms exist for um, these near cliques. We also showed that, we also showed a moon mosaic bound on the number of duplexes uh, in general graphs, and this is a tight bound. We also showed that enumerating certain kinds of um, subgraphs, near cliques, is actually not FPT. So not every kind of near clique uh, can be counted in FPT time on, in CTO's graphs. Um, we also give a very simple backtracking based algorithm for counting cliques. And we'll actually look at what this algorithm is. Uh, the algorithm of Fox et al was not backtracking. And so in, in that sense, this new backtracking algorithm that we give, it provides um, new understanding of why we're able to do click counting um, so efficiently in practice. Okay, so the three-step approach of Fox et al. Uh, these are the three steps that it involved. So the first step basically involves give either using an existing bound or giving a new bound for the number of maximal cliques. Uh, so since we, this was for counting cliques, but for any, um, near clique that we're interested in, we would first give a bound for the number of such of that near clique in general graphs. Then we, the second step would involve showing that counting the number of maximal near cliques of that kind um, in C close graphs is actually equivalent to counting the number of those maximal um, near cliques in a polynomial number of smaller graphs, uh, usually bounded by size C. So this is where we heavily use the C-close property and um, basically to convert, so this gives an FPT algorithm and then to convert this into an enumeration algorithm, we use um, a polynomial delay algorithm. Okay, so that was the three-step approach 
of Fox et al. And uh, I'm going to describe the backtracking algorithm here just to give you a taste of the kinds of things that we can do in uh, this C close setup. So I'm going to describe an algorithm which is a generic uh, click counting algorithm. A lot of the um, recent works in click counting are sort of specialized versions of this algorithm. Okay, so before I show that algorithm, it would be useful to uh, get some intuition for how cliques behave. So cliques are recursive structures. What that means is that a subset of a clique is also a clique. So that suggests that if you want to count all cliques in the graph, one could take a small clique, look at its common neighbors. From the set of common neighbors, we pick a vertex, um, add it to the clique to get a bigger clique, look at the new set of common neighbors, and so on. And so if we do this process exhaustively, we will have discovered every clique in the graph. And uh, once we discover every clique, to check for maximality, we can basically check if there's any other vertex we can add to that clique to get a bigger clique. So checking for maximality is not difficult. Um, in the process that I described uh, here, uh, we would end up finding every clique multiple times. So in order to avoid that, um, there's a simple trick, which is we order the vertices of the graph um, and orient the edges from lower vertices to higher vertices. So in this way, we convert it to a DAG. And once we convert it to a DAG, one can show that, um, say if we wanted to count the number of K cliques in G, then that would be equivalent to counting the number of K minus one cliques in the out neighborhood of each vertex. So for every vertex, we would look at its out neighborhood and now we are interested in counting the number of cliques in these out neighborhoods. So it's the same problem that we started with, um, but just on smaller instances. So what does the algorithm do? It recurses. So for every vertex in, this, in these out neighborhoods, uh, the algorithm will spawn a branch calculate the new out neighborhoods. And so in this case, six and eight is uh, in the common out neighborhood of both one and five and so on. And so at every recursive call, we basically have a subgraph in which we are interested in counting um, cliques. <clears throat> and so this process continues until there are no more subgraphs left. And so in the end, what we have is what is called as a recursive enumeration forest. So this, this, recurse, this recursive tree, it has certain properties. So every path from root to a node represents a unique clique uh, from the original graph. And um, these blue nodes um, at level one, they correspond to cliques of size one. At level two, these correspond to cliques of size two and so on. And every blue vertex here is a recursive call that the algorithm makes. And so the total number of recursive calls is equal to the number of clicks in the graph. Now, what happens in the case of C close graphs? So recall that at every node in the tree, we have a subgraph <clears throat> that we are interested in. Um, enumerating the cliques in. And whenever the subgraph is a clique, we don't need to explore further. So if you're interested in getting maximal cliques, if the subgraph that we're looking at is a clique, we can simply add it to the vertices on the path and get a bigger clique, and then we can check for maximality. So basically, whenever the subgraph is a clique, we, we don't need to continue the recursion tree. We can treat it as a leaf node. So the first thing that uh, we observe is that in the case of C-close graphs, all leaves at, all nodes at, at depth uh, C have to be leaf nodes. 
and which means that they have to be cliques. This is because if they are not cliques, then that means that there is some missing edge in, um, in that subgraph. And all the vertices on the path to that subgraph are common neighbors of that missing edge, that pair of vertices that are not connected. And so because we are, this graph is a C-closed graph, and that means that there cannot be more than C common neighbors, which means that um, if we are beyond depth C, uh, there cannot exist any missing edge in the subgraph. Right, now suppose we, um, so the leaf nodes are all cliques, and let's say the internal nodes, uh, the non-leaf nodes, we call them internal nodes, uh, these being internal nodes, um, that means that they do not have a missing edge. Sorry, they, they are not cliques, so they have um, a missing edge. Now, a missing edge has at most C common neighbors. Now, one can show that, so take any missing edge from the original graph. In how many internal nodes can this missing edge appear? So one can show that since there are C neighbors, at most C neighbors, one can form at most two to C unique um, sets of these C vertices. And the path to the node containing um, the edge that we are, the missing edge that we are looking at, that path uh, has to be one of these two to the C um, subsets. So what that means is that this missing edge can appear in at most two to the C internal nodes. And given that there are at most N square missing edges, this gives us that the number of internal nodes must be at most n square times two to the c. Since every internal node can have at most n children, this gives us that the size of the tree is at most n cube two to the uh, two to the c. And um, if you are a little more careful with the analysis, we can show that the size of the tree would actually be n square um, times two to the c. Okay, so that was for cliques. And uh, this algorithm that I described is actually used as a subroutine in uh, the algorithms for some of the other uh, near cliques um, that I talked about. So the first near clique is D plus one plex. Um, so a D plus one plex, so S is a D plus one plex if every vertex in S is adjacent to all but at most D vertices in S. So you can think of this as um, S is the complement of a bounded degree graph with degree at most D. A one plex would be a clique. So the trivial bound for uh, counting uh, D plus one plexes is two to the n times n square. And for a very long time, nothing better than this was known. Only recently, um, a recent work showed that uh, this can actually be done in time um, gamma to the power n times n square. And gamma depends on the d. And the value of gamma d is uh, less than two for all positive d. And what we show is that there exists, um, so we show a moon Moser type theorem uh, for the number of maximal tuplexes in, uh, in general graphs. So, and this bound that we give is actually tight. So other than the moon Moser theorem, which is the theorem for uh, the number of maximal cliques, uh, this is the only known tight bound for 
um, this kind of structure. So the theorem says, so this is a simplified version of the theorem. Um, the actual running time is a little more complicated and the analysis as well. Uh, but essentially it says that maximal d plus one plexes can be enumerated in time n to the 2d times uh, two to the c. And uh, I'll describe the simpler version of the proof here for the slightly tighter version, uh, please refer the paper. So a maximal d plus one plex can be um, of two types, one of two types. Either it has no missing edge, in which case it is a clique. And so this can be countered using the algorithm that I described earlier. The second case is when it has a missing edge. Now in this case, suppose UV is the missing edge. We know that because of the C-closed property, there can be at most C vertices that are common neighbors of U and V. And because of the D plus one flex property, we know that there can be at most 2D minus two vertices, such that those vertices are not common neighbors of both U and V. So the D plus one flex, um, you can also think of it as um, a subgraph is a D plus one flex if um, every vertex in that subgraph is connected to all vertices, all other vertices of that subgraph, except at most D vertices. And so that means that the number of vertices that U is not connected to in this subgraph is at most uh, D. And the number of vertices that V is not connected to is at most D, uh, which means that the set that I have marked in the circle on the right can be of size at most 2D minus two because U and V are themselves not connected to each other. And so this basically gives a bound on the size of any maximal D plus one flex. So we can essentially look at every missing edge uh, and enumerate these two sets. And that's how we get the uh, running time. Uh, to get a slightly tighter bound, we, um, we essentially use polynomial delay algorithms. Um, The next subgraph that we show FPT algorithms for um, are the bounded co-degeneracy graph. So basically a graph is de-degenerate if every induced subgraph has at least one vertex with degree at most D. So graph is co-degenerate if its complement is de degenerate. And so the theorem goes that uh, maximal co D degenerate graphs can be enumerated in uh, n to the 2D plus four um, times four to the C time. And um, we showed that this, uh, I mean, for enumeration, this is in fact uh, tight. So there are examples where um, at least in the exponent of N, um, it cannot be any uh, lesser than 2D. And similarly, we also show results for bounded co-tree width. So uh, the complement graph has tree width at most t. And in this case also, we show that there is an algorithm that runs in time n to the t plus four times four to the c that outputs all maximal induced subgraphs with co-tree width less than or equal to t. And this is again tight as far as enumeration is concerned. Okay, so in the end, we show that there exists simple backtracking based FPT algorithms for counting near cliques and cliques in C closed graphs. We give a tight bound for the number of duplexes in general graphs. But the most important message um, from this work, um, as was put by one of our reviewers, is that there are natural backtracking based algorithms in practice for finding large cliques in practical graphs. And the new C-closed analysis framework for the first time explains why. And thus further study of this C-closed framework 
is one of the most promising directions for theoreticians to contribute to this practically important algorithmic setting. Thank you.